Welcome back, everyone. This technical segment is sponsored by Pony Express. Check out the Community Edition and turn your Nexus 7 into a lean, mean, pen-testing machine. For all those hard-to-reach places, there's Pony Express. Visit them on the web at PonyExpress.com. And by Black Hills Information Security, the leaders in penetration testing and active defense. Email consulting at BlackHillsInfosec.com to request a quote today. Now, I'm going to turn it over to Chris, who is the current director of e-commerce here at Security Weekly, works full-time for Dell SecureWorks and uh, has been promoted from production assistant, although he still has to do both jobs, which is, I think, hilarious. Uh, he's been... <laughs> He doesn't, though. <laughs> he has become more and more involved in InfoSec in the past few years and excited to be a panel presenting this evening. He'll be discussing an article describing how to turn a Raspberry Pi into a Tor router hotspot. And why is it that you wanted to give this fabulous technical segment, Chris? Well, last week we talked about the uh, Onana Box, which was a Kickstarter project that I think the internet was ready for. But the people who decided it was a good idea to go ahead and build it weren't quite ready to build it for that many people um, they were offering it for $45 on Kickstarter so you pledge $45 and around the end of the year I think December they said that they would have them ready for distribution and one of the problems was they kind of misled their audience as far as building the hardware. How so? Well, they said that the board that they had used to build the Anana box was sketched from their own design, um, and several users on Reddit found that not to be true. Because of a picture they posted, right? Right. They posted a picture showing the actual board itself, and we were able to match up the serial number and model number to one that could be purchased online. Mm. Like we said, I think it was last week, they should have just come forward and, and done that. Right. Uh, and said that they did that. But you have built your own Tor Anonymizer right. box. So I had a, uh, a Raspberry Pi laying around and thought that it would be a good platform to build something similar out Go of. Go ahead, hold that up for the camera. Nice. Um, so this is Raspberry Pi. I like the Pi. case. It's a pretty cool case. Case, SD card. Uh, there's a Wi-Fi 802.11n chip there. Also, there's a USB to Ethernet adapter, um, which is optional. You don't really need that. Uh, so the gotcha. way it works is the onboard Ethernet port you would plug into your router. Um, and there's software on here to bridge the connection coming in through Tor and broadcast it out the wireless adapter. Is that a layer two or layer three bridge? Uh, it's a layer three. Layer three because bridge. Okay. So it, route, it routes through right. it. Yeah, I got you. Okay. Um, but you can also use the USB to Ethernet adapter to have a wired connection. You just have to change the config around a little bit, change y WLAN zero out for ETH zero, and then you have yourself a layer three bridge that's Ethernet to Ethernet. Um, you can also... I haven't tried it yet, but it is, I'm sure it's possible. You can bridge the wireless adapter to a network. So that way, if you're in, say, a coffee shop and they have wireless available, mm -hmm. you can bridge the, the Raspberry Pi yeah. to wireless and then plug in Ethernet into it. Gotcha. Um, All with the goal of being anonymous. Right. Mostly anonymous. Mostly anonymous. Right. Um, Tor is a great software for, or a great platform for browsing the internet anonymously, but there's a couple of caveats, I think. Um, one of them being, if you go to a website, say, to check your email, Google keeps a copy of your IP address when you log in, and then say you go to a coffee shop to use your Tor router to upload some sensitive information. Now, it, say it took you 20 minutes to get there, and then you log in through the Tor network to upload those documents using your Gmail account or using Payspin. Uh, now you're coming from another IP address, and that could be anywhere in the world. So in that span of 20 minutes, 
you could have come from here, from Rhode Island, from your IP address, and then at the coffee shop, now you're in Pakistan. So that would, for somebody who's watching your movements and where you're walking in from, they could be able or ascertain that you live in Rhode Island. Sorry, it's your show. Go ahead. You're running the show, Chris. Um, so I wrote a article on how to install the Tor software on a Raspberry Pi. And, and so what are your choices for the underlying operating system on the Raspberry Pi? Um, I am using Raspbian, mm -hmm. I believe is how you pronounce it. Um, there's a couple options, but that one is the easiest to work with, in my opinion. Um, I work with Linux on a daily basis at work. Mm -hmm. um, so this is just Raspbian as a variant of Debian. Gotcha. Uh, this board is probably underutilized for what I'm doing with it for this purpose. Mm -hmm. um, as the Anonobox hardware was specifically you know, purpose-built, only had a couple megs of onboard flash for its operating system, and a smaller CPU, they were able to get the price down because the Raspberry Pis are about $35 now for the Model B, which mm -hmm. is what this one is. There's the Model B Plus now, so the prices of the older ones have come down a little bit. But the the Model Bs are still you know 30 to $35 just for the board itself. Um, then you have to buy you know a case. Um, I also have the USB to serial adapter, which I use to program it if you don't have... So that way you can set up networking on it. Cool. So tell us more about the config. Um, so it's running Raspbian, which is a variant of Debian. And what I installed on it is a program called Host APD, uh, a DHCP server, and Tor. So with those three components installed, we're able to browse the internet anonymously. Um, if you're using the wired only, if you're not using wireless, you don't need host APD. Um, gotcha. What host APD does is <coughs> broadcast the wireless access point through the wireless adapter, so that way you can connect to it with a laptop. Uh, one of the problems I ran into was that the version of host APD for the Raspberry Pi Debian operating system on here uh, is only for a specific wireless adapter. Um, so I had to go out and grab the kernel modules for my specific Realtek wireless chipset controller and build my own version of host APD. Um, after I did that, I looked around on the internet, found out that a website called Ooh, where'd it go? Adafruit, which is yep. another supplier of integrated devices Ada, like this. Adafruit, yep. Adafruit. Yep, they had already built one for what I was already doing. But it was interesting to do nonetheless. Um, so also you need to set up IP tables and modify the syscontrol config. So that way you're allowing forwarding from the wireless adapter over to the E to zero interface, which is the actual interface the traffic is leaving. Um, so if we take a look at the IP tables configuration on the device, which is not here, demo fail. Capitalized NAT, maybe. Well, anyway, it's redirecting any traffic that comes in for DNS requests and SSH so you can still access the device. 
but any other traffic is being routed over the Tor network. So we can see that traffic on YLAN WN0 comes in, gets routed over Tor, and gets sent back out the ETH0 interface. Cool. And then there's a couple other options for the configuration. You just need to set up uh, what you want your broadcast domain to be for if you're using host APD and allowing uh, wireless devices to connect to it. You just need to set up what network that's going to be. You need to allow forwarding. You also need to set a static IP address, and this functions as the gateway. So when you know your laptop connects to the Raspberry Pi, it has all that information automatically. You don't have to set anything statically. So it's a pretty easy install. I think it takes about 45 minutes. It takes a little longer if you're if you have to compile kernel modules yourself, if you're buying a non-specific uh, wireless adapter, one that doesn't already have the kernel modules pre-built into host APD for you. So it, it NATs you, so you have a different IP address behind that device than you do on the outside? Yep. Gotcha. So that would also protect you with a firewall. People couldn't come in the other way either. Right. I think that's, a, that's the idea that um, the creators of Anonobox are going for as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not just anonymize, but protects you as well. Right. Um, with this, it's a little more complicated. Um, I think the people who were who pledged to um, kickstart Anonobox were looking for a plug-and-play solution. Um, this, you kind of build it yourself. Yeah. Uh, you have to know a little bit about the hardware, um, and obviously you have to have the know-how to uh, install everything, put it together. Now, cost-wise, how does it compare to the Anonobox? Uh, $30 for the board, $10 for an SD card, $10 for the wireless adapter, or $10 for the USB to Ethernet. So looking at and this cable you don't really need, but it's nice to have. So $50. Yeah. Is that case, case included? No, the case for that one, the case was not included. So the case was four or five dollars. I gotcha. Um, Amazon, if you have so Prime, fit your sixty bucks. Yep. If you have Prime, free shipping. Um, but like I said, it's a little over, a little too much hardware for what we're actually, what I'm actually doing with it. Um, I think that's why the Anonobox would have succeeded if they had come out and said, you know, we didn't build this board ourselves. We just you know, repurposed repurposed existing hardware. Mm -hmm. uh, they did say that they requested that there be more flash installed for Tor. Mm -hmm. So it is a little bit customized, but it's not to say uh, they drew out the schematic themselves and had someone custom make the silk, silk screening for the board. Cool. And I think theirs is a little more user friendly as well. Like for this, if you wanted to use the USB to Ethernet instead of the wireless, you have to go in and change the configuration around. It's not like you can just flip a switch on the device to switch yeah. from wireless to wired. Right. Still cool nonetheless. And where can people find your blog, Chris? Uh, I put a link in the show notes. It's at sin-flood.com. Cool. And I'll put a link in the show notes as well with the instructions. Awesome. Thanks so much, Chris. And now, Chris, take us. Oh, wait. You're. you're the, oh, okay. And with <coughs> that, we're going to take a short break, come back, and talk about the stories for this week. For this week. week.